Well, praise the Lord and welcome to the New Horizons Church online broadcast. Church family, I'm so glad to be able to come to you uh, via our YouTube channel, Facebook, whatever social platform, social media platform you're receiving us on. Listen, I believe God has a blessing today with your name on it. And don't be selfish. Let somebody else know that we're on the uh, on the social media channel that you're watching. Send them the link. Let them know that they can connect with what God is doing here at the New Horizons Church. Listen, we're getting ready to worship the Lord. God has given me a word to help you and help me to be successful financially, even in these times of financial crises. And so I'm looking forward to sharing that in just a moment. But I always like to start out when I get ready to worship by reading God's word, getting my heart and my mind set on heaven's king and earth's Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. As we get ready to worship him today, let's look in the word of God in Psalm 106, verse one. I have the New King James Version of God's word before me. Yours may read a little differently, but listen to what the word says in Psalm 106, verse one. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice and he who does righteousness at all times. Verse one says, praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I got a reason to give God praise today. God has been good to me. God has been good to my family. God has been good to our church and our ministry. And I'm praying God has been good to you. Woke you up this morning, gave you clothes on your back, food on your table, air to breathe, putting one foot in front of the other, op opening up your eyes, being able to talk, listen. All of those things are blessings from the Lord. And we need to praise him because his mercy endures forever. Listen, Stephanie and the praise team and the musicians are anointed to lead us into worship today. So wherever you sit, stand or lay, Change the whole atmosphere around you by opening up your mouth and giving God the best praise that you have. Clap your hands, dance, run, shout, whatever you got to do. Join in with us as we worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus name, we love you and honor you and thank you for this day you have made. For it is your day and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. God, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Fill us now with him that we might offer you worship and express our love for you through spirit-filled worship. I pray somebody's going to be saved today. Somebody's going to be changed. Somebody's going to be delivered. Somebody else is going to be set free through the worship and the word here on the New Horizons Church online worship experience. God, get all of the glory out of everything we do today, and we'll be careful to praise your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, join in. Open up your mouth. Worship the Lord with us, and I'll be right back with God's word that is for you. Amen. Praise the Lord, New Horizons. Good morning. Good morning. We have just entered into the presence of the Lord. We just love him today. Uh, we're just going to do a new song, and I want you to get it in your spirit. Real simple. We're going to teach you the course of the song, and I hope that you get it in your spirit as you're washing dishes or washing your car or whatever you're doing, that you would start singing the song. It comes from Proverbs 3, and it talks about the word, writing it on the tablet and hiding it in your heart.
Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I pray that you were blessed um, by the praise and worship of our praise team and our musicians. Thank you for joining in again uh, to our online broadcast. Um, listen, I've got a wonderful word uh, from the Lord. Let me pray for you, and then we'll get into God's word together today. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the worship that has taken place. Now, God, we're getting ready to look into your word, and we pray as the psalmist that you'll show us wonderful things in your law. Give us eyes to see and hear, ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. I pray, God, that we would not just be hearers of your word, but we would be doers of your holy and righteous word. God, I know that many people are struggling in this season with the COVID-19 virus, with the financial crisis, and with all of the social unrest that's taking place in our nation and in our communities. So God, I just pray for your grace and your peace and your mercy to be abundant in the life of your people. And I pray, Lord God, that souls will be saved, that lives will be changed, that our community be, will be impacted by the preaching of the good news of Jesus Christ. Bless us all now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, church family, listen, um, I wanted to come to you. God has been dealing with me about helping us navigate the new normal that we find ourselves in. Certainly with COVID-19 and all that's going on with the pandemic, I pray that you are practicing safe social distancing. I pray that you and your family are following what the healthcare experts are telling us to do in terms of wearing masks, in terms of putting ourselves in position, as well as others, uh, to be safe in this season while we try to also socialize as God leads us to be able to do that. But I also know that, that we're facing a financial crisis because when people were trying to help us to lower the curve or flatten out the curve, if you will. Many people um, weren't able to go to work. Many places of businesses and establishments were sh literally shut down. Some people were furloughed. Some people lost their jobs. Some people uh, were going through a horrible, horrible financial crisis. And many people are still struggling and trying to figure it out financially. And so I've been praying for you, been praying for your families. And uh, God has put on my heart uh, to give a word today of encouragement in the area of finances, in the area of being blessed in this season of, of really a financial crisis for many people. And as I get ready to share this, I already know whenever we start talking about money, whenever we start talking about finances, anytime it can be a painful situation, but certainly it can be painful in difficult times and difficult seasons. Uh, I remember one of my mentors, Pastor Ralph West, as he was uh, talking about stewardship to his church one day, he relayed a story that when he goes to the doctor, um, that the doctor starts poking and prodding and pushing on his body to find out if everything is all right. And he said that when the doctor starts poking and pushing and prodding on his body, if there's some pain in a particular area, what the doctor then says is that we have a problem because things shouldn't hurt in that area. And that's kind of how it is whenever the pastor or the preacher or the teacher starts talking about money in any season, but certainly in a time of financial crisis, that if we start talking about money or start talking about finances and it hurts you in a particular area, that pain shouldn't be there. That is a signal that there may be something wrong or something going on underneath the surface that we need to get to. And so I don't want you to be pained. I don't want you to be unnerved. I don't want you to be upset during this message because really this message is designed to help all of us make it through this financial crisis, make it through these muddy times with our money and help us to be successful even in the struggling times that financially many of us may have to face. And so I'm praying that this will be a message of encouragement, a message of hope, and a message that will equip you and your family to succeed in these financial seasons. And let me also say this, that I have 
um, studied finance for many years. I have a, an economics degree from my undergraduate. I have a master's in business administration uh, from one of the MBA programs here in our nation uh, in business economics. And with all of the, the education that I had, I've worked in corporate America and all of the experience I had there, I never really learned how to manage money personally until I learned it from my pastor and learned it from the Bible. I learned how to manage money corporately. I learned how to manage money as a, ma a manager of a business or a brand, but I really didn't learn how to manage money appropriately until I learned it from God's word. God's word has so much to say about everything in our life, about us being saved, about developing our souls, about discipleship, but it also has a lot to say about how we manage our money. And what we have taught our church here at New Horizons from the day one that we started is that we're not afraid to talk about money. In fact, we were planted during a time of a recession in 2006, one of the most difficult financial seasons uh, that, the, the, that our country has gone through. And we taught our church and we taught the membership of our, our ministry, we taught the families and the individuals, the financial principles that are in God's word. And so many people were blessed to come out of debt. So many people were blessed to make it through that season. And then of course, God blessed our church to the point where we are a debt free church. We have never owed anyone anything other than our love. We've been able to purchase a building and some land for this ministry debt free with cash. We have uh, reserves where we can be able to help our community do things. And so these principles work not only for the church, but they also work for the individual Christian. My wife and I have been following these principles for some 20 years now. And blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are a debt free family. We don't owe anybody anything. We're able to save, we're able to be blessed, and we're able to bless other people with the overflow that we have. And so what I really wanna share with you is from my heart of what I believe God's plan is for us financially. It works for the church, it works for the Christian, it's worked from one generation to the next, and it can work for you and your family. So my prayer is that you'll be open-minded, open-hearted to what God is getting ready to share in these next few moments, and that you'll be able to apply these principles to your life as we move forward in what we have to do. So I want you to look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. You want to get that out, uh, get that on your uh, iPad or your phone or your Bible if you have it. And I have the New King James Version in front of me. I'm going to read the first uh, well, 15 verses of that chapter because uh, I want you to get the context of what we're going to share uh, today in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It says, now concerning the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know your willingness about which I boast of you to the Macedonians, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal has stirred up the majority. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect, that as I said, you may be ready. Lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this conduct or confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not a grudging obligation. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but is also abounding through many thanksgivings to God, while through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And by their prayer for you, who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Verse 10 says, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower, bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, while you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Amen. Amen. I want to talk about the secret success 
that's in the seed, the secret success that's in the seed. In this passage of scripture, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, the Corinthian, the Corinthian Christians, and they had promised to give uh, over and above what they have, have been giving to be a blessing to some Christians in another area who were going through severe trials. And as these Christians in Corinth had promised to bless these other uh, believers, Paul had begun to boast about their giving, about their plans to give. And as he was boasting um, about them, it increased the faith of some other Christians, namely in Macedonia. And they began to give liberally. They began to give over and above. In fact, they gave out of their poverty. They began to give over and above to be a blessing to other Christians. And so now Paul is making his way back to the church at Corinth, back to the Corinthian church, so that they can make good on the promise and be able to give in the collection so that he can take it and bless those that are in need. And it is in this context that he writes to them in chapter 8 and chapter 9 about the importance of their generosity, that it, it brings a witness and a glorification to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who was so generous to us by giving his life so that we who were poor can be rich in salvation, rich in grace, rich in mercy, rich in love, rich in material. Whatever the thing is that we need, we can be rich in because of Christ's sacrifice in our life. And we bring glory to him when we, like him, are then generous with the things that God gives to us. And so Paul is trying to remind the church of Corinth of this generosity that they've pledged, this generous gift that they're planning to give so that when he shows up, they won't be disappointed and he won't be disappointed. And if other people he's been boasting to show up, they won't think that the church of Corinth is a fraud or fake and or phony. And it is in this context that then Paul begins to talk to them about the importance of their giving. And he talks to them and he says, don't give out of painful pressure and don't give because somebody is pushing you and prop prodding you and pumping you to give. He says, don't do it like that. He says, give with a purpose, give on purpose. And we teach the people at our church, we teach the members and the families and the individuals at our church, we don't beat people up about giving, we don't dog people about giving, we don't shame people into giving, because the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, that God is excited when he finds somebody who gives not because they've been pushed to give or not because they've been pressured to give, but because they give out of the purpose of their heart and they enjoy giving. The motivation matters to God. And God says he loves a cheerful giver. And so as Paul is teaching them about this importance of giving, watch what he says. He says that when we give, he says, then we can expect that God will make sure we have everything we need for every good work. In fact, let me read it to you again here in chapter 9. He says in verse 8, or verse 7, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, verse 7. Verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have in all sufficiency in all things, have an abundance for every good work. In other words, what God says is when we give, I know the enemy will try to tell us, but if I give, then I will have less for me. And the enemy is a lie. The devil is a lie. When we give, we enact the grace of God in our life. And God promises to make sure we have an abundance of everything we need for every good work that God calls us to do. So he says, you cannot beat God giving because the more you give to God, the more God gives back to you. In other words, he says, if you sow bountifully or sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, God says you will reap bountifully. So to some degree, to some level, we can control the harvest in our lives by the seed in which we sow. And I know many people say, well, that doesn't refer to money, uh, but it does in this context because Paul is talking about raising an offering in order to be able to bless other Christians who are struggling through the success of those Christians who are prospering. And God says in this context, he's talking about money and he's talking about sowing seed and he's making an illustration that we can understand that the, if we sow a little, we reap a little. But if we sow a lot, we can reap a lot. The success is literally in our seed. The secret to our success to some degree is in the seeds that we sow. And God gives seed 
to sowers. If somebody is in need, what God will do is give them seed to sow to be able to meet their need. If you have a need, you can sow a seed to be able to reap a harvest to be able to meet your need. Let me show you about the secret of the success in the seed. In Genesis, when God got things started here on this earth, and he blessed Adam and Eve and put them in the garden and told Adam to keep the garden and to till it and brought Eve along as a help meter, a partner for Adam to be able to handle the responsibilities that they had both been given. God said he gave them every fruit bearing seed for both food and for fruitfulness. That in other words, when God blesses us with fruit, it comes with the meat that's in, that's in the fruit but the meat in the fruit is for our consumption today. But then there are seeds in the fruit that are be, to be planted for tomorrow. Did you catch that? That everything that comes in is not to be consumed. Some things are to be consumed. Other things are to be sown so that there can be fruit for the next harvest. That's God's plan for replenishing us. That's God's plan for us having resources is knowing the difference between the fruit and the seed. And the secret to long-term success is what we do with our seed. Because God gives seed to the sower through the fruit that they get from the seed that they sowed in the harvest that they were expecting to have. Does that make sense to you? That God says, if you just keep sowing and you keep reaping and taking the seeds out of what you reap and keep sowing it, you will keep having a harvest and God will meet your need, then he will give you over and above what you need for yourself so that somebody else who's less fortunate than you can be blessed by the harvest that God has given to you. Let me show you how this works. We've got some fruit on our table here. We've got some pineapples, some apples, some oranges, and some lemons, and our team has set these fruit up, and, and, and this is the fruit-bearing seed that God gives to us. He gives us all kinds of fruits. Um, in our lives. We go work our jobs. We go uh, do what God has called us to do. And we are then bring back a harvest of fruit in our life. And when we get that fruit, what we are called to do is to open up that fruit and we can eat what's on the inside. So I have a lemon here and I'm going to cut this lemon here in half. And inside of the lemon, what you can see are some lemon wedges and you can make lemonade if you get lemons. But also inside of each lemon are some seeds inside of the lemon. And what I have to learn to do and what you have to learn to do is to not just eat the lemon and eat the seed, but eat the fruit of the lemon, but save the seed so I can sow it in the future to get more lemons. So I have some lemons here. I also have some kiwi. God blesses us with some kiwi. When I open up the kiwi, there's all kinds of seed inside of the kiwi. Doesn't that look good? It looks good, but you shouldn't eat it all because if you want to have future kiwis, you got to sow some kiwi seeds in order to get a kiwi harvest. And then I have uh, another fruit. I'm not sure what kind of fruit this is, um, but they told me um, that it is fruit. Uh, oh, it's an avocado. It's an avocado. That's what it is. And as I cut this avocado, it has told me if I cut it, it's something in there. Yes, there's a big piece of seed in there. Uh, let me see if I got this one I had already cut. There it is. When I open up this avocado, you can see inside of it is a, is, a, is a seed that's in there to be planted so I can get some additional avocado. Now here's the key. I can't eat the seed because if I eat the seed instead of sowing the seed, then all I'm going to have a couple of hours later is a great big mess. <laughs> Because the seed wasn't intended to be consumed, it was intended to be planted. And so if you want to have a harvest, and I want to have a harvest, God says if we sow sparingly, we'll reap sparingly. If we sow bountifully, we will reap bountifully, because you cannot beat God giving. The more you give, the more God gives back to you. Let me see if I can show it to you one more time. I have uh, some watermelon seeds that um, we went to the store and purchased, and so uh, here on this package, uh, it says watermelon, crimson sweet watermelon. And so if I want to have some watermelon in my garden, what I do is I take the seeds in this packet and I plant them in my garden if I want to have the picture 
that's on the package. Now, I can't get this picture just by wishing it to happen. <laughs> I can't get this picture just by praying over the seed. At some point, I'm going to have to take the seed out of the packet and plant it into the ground if I want to get the picture that's on the package. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's not enough to get the vision from God about how he wants to bless you. Now we have to take some faith along with the word and the vision and put the seed in the ground if I want to get what the package says I can have. That's true if I'm planting watermelons. That's also true if I'm planting pumpkins. These beautiful pumpkins are available to me. I have the seed on the inside of the bag. But as long as I keep the seed in the bag, and don't put the seed in the ground, all I'm going to have is a picture and I'll never get the pumpkin. Who am I preaching to? That God has given you a vision of pumpkins or watermelons, a business, a new home, a new uh, uh, financial situation that your family has been in and he wants to deliver you from. And he's given you the vision right out of his word about what to do. But it's not enough to have the vision. At some point, if I'm going to have the vision come to pass in my life, I've got to do what the word of God says. I have to do what the package tells me to do. And as I was reading the instructions on how to get watermelon and how to get pumpkins to grow in my garden, look what it said on the back in the small print on the back of the package. It says enclosed seeds are for planting purposes only and are not <laughs> for human consumption. Did you hear that? Uh, Elder Rome, when he purchased the seeds, he said, Pastor, read the back of that package. I think there's an illustration in there. And as he read that to me, it says, these seeds are not for human consumption. They are designed to be planted to produce what's on the package. Some of the seed that we have in our pockets are not for human consumption. It is to be planted so we can get the picture of the principle that has already been preached from God's word. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but God has given you a vision for a future financially that looks different than anything you've ever seen. I know we're in a financial crisis. I know things look bad. I know people have lost jobs. You may be in a financial situation. You may have lost your job. And if God gives you a harvest, God gives you an increase, he's saying some of that increase is to put food on your table. Some of it is to pay your rent and your mortgage. But the over and above is so that you can sow your seed to get a harvest on the other side. And that's my message to somebody today. When you sow seed into the lives of other people, when you sow seed into the life of the church, when you sow seed into the life of people who are less fortunate, God says he is able to make all grace abound toward you that you will have all sufficiency in all things so that you will have everything you need for every good work. Make a choice that I'm going to eat the fruit of my labor that God has provided, but I'm also going to sow the seed that comes from the harvest so I can have a future harvest into my life. I want to help somebody today. And every time we teach on finances, I always tell you there are four principles that everybody needs to follow. We follow them at our church here at New Horizons, and it's been blessing us for the last 15 years, again, to be a debt-free ministry, to have surplus, to be able to bless those in our community. My wife, Camille, and I follow it in our household. And these four principles are very simple. Number one, give a tithe to church that you're being blessed by. Bring the tithe into the storehouse and prove me now where you have meat, that there, there may be meat in my house, God says. Prove me now herewith and see when I open up the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing you don't have room enough to get, to receive. Give a tithe to the local church where you're being blessed. Secondly, save some for yourself. Give 10% to God and then try to put aside 10% of everything you earn, earn for yourself for a rainy day. Have ant sense. Ants gather in the summer so that when winter comes, they can make it through the cold, bitter, harsh winters that's coming. Give, save, pay off your debt. If you owe a credit card company, if you owe a car note, if you owe your, 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 your friend that you borrowed money from last week, last month, or last year, pay off your debts. And we talk about doing it in a debt snowball, paying off the smallest debt first, then adding that debt onto the older debt or the bigger debt later. And when you finish paying off your debt, 
live within your means. Don't live outside of your means. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Don't try to keep up with the Smiths. Don't try to keep up with the Johnsons. Don't try to keep up with the Jacksons. Don't try to keep up with anybody else. You live and I live within our means. And God says, be content with whatever state of faith or faith that you have in the state that you're in. God says, you can be content and have peace if you follow those principles. But it starts with giving, sowing your seed, followed on by saving, paying off your debt, and living within your means. This first Sunday, we're getting ready to take Holy Communion in just a moment. But before that, I wanna remind you that before the people in Macedonia gave their finances, the Bible says they gave themselves to the Lord. <laughs> the best gift you can give is not just your money, but it's to give yourself to the Lord. And then once you give yourself to the Lord, give yourself over to a ministry that is a Bible teaching, Bible believing church where you can grow and develop in the Lord and that will teach you biblical principles about how to be blessed and be successful in the things of God. It doesn't start with the money, it doesn't start with the finances. It starts with your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They gave themselves first to the Lord, then to the ministry, then they gave money to the ministry. Listen, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin, Everything that I talked about is important financially, but this is important eternally, to give your life to Jesus so that he can wash your sins away. All of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. I've sinned, I've made mistakes. People in our church have sinned and made mistakes. You've sinned and made mistakes. I don't need to tell you about all of my sins. If I did, you probably wouldn't want to listen to me. But you and I don't have more sin power than God has grace power. We've not made a mistake that the blood of Jesus Christ cannot wash away and forgive. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and wash away, purify us of all unrighteousness. Friend, I want you to know, I know a God, I know a savior who gave his life on that cross, was pierced, crucified, died, buried, but raised up on the third day so that you could be saved right now today. And if that's you, as much as we've talked about finances, it's even more important that you get your faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin so you can live eternally with him in heaven. And I want you to know if that's you today, we celebrate with you if you've given your life to Christ and you need to join our church. Um, there's some information at the bottom of our screen that you can write that information down let us know, hey, pastor, I want to be a part of the New Horizons Church. I want to be a part of your ministry. I want to be a part of what God is doing. We welcome you with open arms into our church. Or if you're just now becoming a Christian, we want you to know we love you and celebrate with you and the angels in heaven over the choice you made to become a Christian. And if you want to join our church, we want you here. But if you need to know where you can find a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church, we will lead you in that direction. We just want to hear from you. So let us know that you've made a choice to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life and the savior of your soul. I wanna pray for you right where you are and you have not made a mistake, you've not done anything that God cannot save you from. You may think you have, but the blood of Jesus is able to wash away every one of our sins. And I wanna pray that prayer for you that you'll accept him right where you are, that you'll make a confession with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross and God raised him from the dead and that your soul will be saved even right now. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, your word has already been preached. The gospel, the good news, the UN Gileon of Jesus Christ about his death, his burial, and his resurrection, the power of the forgiveness that's in his blood and in his name is available right now to everyone that believes. And God, I believe right now for my friend, my brother, my sister who's tuned into this broadcast, that has not ever accepted you for the forgiveness of your, their sins would do it even right now in this moment. Hallelujah to your name, God. We celebrate the saving grace that is happening in their life right now. God, whatever's in the past, help them to understand that you make all things new. That if any man, woman, boy or girl be in Christ, your word says they are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Look, see, behold, all things have become new. Lord, give them new life in you. Give them a new horizon at this church. Give them a new outlook on their future. 
and we'll be careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, we celebrate with you if you gave your life to Christ for the first time. We celebrate with you if you're now a part of the New Horizons Church. And we want you to know we want to see you grow and develop as a disciple. We want to see you grow and develop in God. And we certainly want to see you blessed financially by following the principles that are outlined in God's word that we teach on a regular basis in this ministry. Listen, I'll be right back in just a moment to lead us into our Holy Communion. It's first Sunday, and I want you to be prepared. Get your elements together. Get your family around the table, some bread or some juice uh, that represents the body and the blood of Christ. And we'll be right back in just a minute to take Holy Communion together. God bless you. I love you. Amen. Every first Sunday at New Horizons Church, we uh, remember the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by taking Holy Communion together. And so this Sunday is no different. And so I pray that you have your elements uh, together in your home. If you don't, uh, take a moment and press pause. Get you something in your house, uh, some bread or some crackers or something that would represent the body of Christ which is broken for us, and then get something in your house uh, that represents the blood. It could be some juice or some other um, beverage that represents the blood of Christ. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a scripture. I'm going to explain what these elements mean. Then I'm going to pray over your elements, and then we can take Holy Communion together. Amen? All right, listen. Uh, in Luke uh, chapter 22, and starting at verse 14, uh, listen to what the word of the Lord says. It says, when the hour had come, he, meaning Jesus, sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup, and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And surely the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man whom, by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves, which of them it was who would do this thing. Amen. The night before uh, Jesus was uh, led out to be um, tried on trumped up charges and ultimately convicted of crimes he never committed and ultimately uh, sacrificed and, and nailed to a cross for your sins and mine, he instituted what we call the Lord's Supper. It is the way he asked us to remember his death, his burial and his resurrection. And what he did that night as he and his disciples were eating around the table, there was some bread on that table and he lifted that bread up. And as he lifted the bread and he talked to each one of the disciples, he told them that the bread represented his body, which would end up being broken for our sins. And when we internalize the bread or the cracker or whatever it is that we internalize today, we are literally internalizing the body of Christ, which was broken for your sins and for mine. On that same table that night, there was a cup of wine. And what Jesus did is he lifted up that cup before the disciples so they could all see it. And he helped them to understand that the cup, the wine represented his blood, which would be shed on Calvary's cross for the remission or the forgiveness or the cleansing of our sins. And so when we are to remember Jesus, we can remember him for so many things. But the one thing he told us he wanted us to remember him by was his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And so today as we get ready to take Holy Communion together, uh, let me pray for you and pray over your elements and then we'll take Holy Communion together as we remember the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your love for us and you demonstrating that love by allowing your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you for making good on your promise to raise him from the dead on the third day. Thank you that Jesus, you are alive forevermore and that you live inside of each and every one of your believers through the power and the precious presence of your Holy Spirit. 
Now, Lord God, as we remember you, as you told us to, these elements that we're getting ready to internalize represent your body and represent your blood, which was shed and broken for us. God, take these elements from their secular use, their physical use, and turn them to sacred spiritual elements as we internalize and remember the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Forgive us of our sins. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us as we move forward from this day on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you want to get your element together, your bread, and again, as Jesus was at the table that night, he lifted the bread and he said, this is his body which was broken for us. As we eat together, we internalize and remember the body of Christ that was broken for us. Let us eat. That same night, there was a cup. And as he lifted it, he said, this is his blood, which is the new covenant in his name. And we remember that blood that was shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us internalize it as we drink together. Amen. Amen. There's something about the uniting of us together around the table of the Lord that helps to remember the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Something happens in the body of Christ. Something happens in your body and mind when we internalize the body and the blood. I want you to go in the newness of life today. Remember that Jesus makes all things new, including you and I. This is the day that he has made. You and I ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for remembering who Jesus is and what he's done for us. God bless you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It is time for the offering. Amen. Listen, uh, we worship God in our giving. It is our way of giving back to God a portion of what he has given to us. Today we learned uh, some lessons about the secret of the seed. When we sow our seed, we plant. And when we plant, we can expect a harvest to come back to us. If we sow sparingly, we can expect to reap sparingly. But if we sow bountifully, we can expect to reap bountifully. God gives seed to the sower. And so if God sees us sowing more, God then will give us more seed to sow. So I thank God for you willing to be willing to sow into this ministry and thank God for all of our tithers. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to do ministry at the level that we do it. Thank you for those of you who give offerings into this ministry. Thank you for our visitors. We have people all over this country who are giving into this ministry as you've tuned into the broadcast and we thank you very much. It's because of your gifts that we're able to give scholarships to our young people. We're able to bless those that are in need. We're able to bless those that are on the front line of COVID-19 responses. We're able to do things uh, around this nation and around the world in Haiti, El Salvador, um, different places um, that are less fortunate than we are, homeless outreach. There are so many people we're able to bless as a result of the giving that you share with us in this ministry. So thank you, thank you, thank you in advance for the giving that you do. And uh, as you get ready to give today, you can give in a lot of different ways. One way is to mail a check to our church. The information is on your screen there below, 7315 East 75th Street. You can mail your check. You can go online to the in New Horizons Church, nhcindy.org. That's our website, nhcindy.org. It's on the screen. There's some information about how you can give online. And of course, you can give through Givelify. It's a great app. You can download it. It's free. Find the New Horizons Church, a picture of pastor, picture of the building. You can give your offering. It only takes a few moments to do that. And we appreciate it so very much. We'll get that information back to you about what you've contributed to our church. And again, thank you so much for your giving. When you give to us, it allows us to see souls saved, lives changed, and the community impacted with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for your gift, and I'm praying for you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the gifts that are being given to further your kingdom here on this earth. Take them, stretch them, and bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God is such a great God. God has put us in the body of Christ. And as part of the body of Christ, uh, many of us have more than what we need. And when we have more than we need, it's because there's somebody else that's in need. So thank you for being a part of our church. And we meet our needs. And so that allows us to meet the needs of other people. I pray your needs were met today. I pray God spoke to you somewhere in this worship service, either through the worship, through the word, or through any of the other things that took place today. And if he spoke to you, uh, let somebody else know 
subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, send the link to somebody else, share the gospel of Jesus Christ with somebody so that you can be a blessing uh, to somebody else's life. We thank you for tuning in to the New Horizons Church online broadcast. Uh, it's time for us to leave, but we know we never leave God's presence. And so my prayer is that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and the love of God will walk with you and talk with you, lead you and guide you into all truth until we meet right here in this place again. We love you. Go in victory. We'll talk to you next time. God bless.